What's going on everyone? DSP here, and welcome to another edition of the Hateful Truth video game review series, where I give you maximum truth and minimum bullshit about the latest retail releases. And in this case, the game that I'm going to talk about actually didn't get a retail release in the United States. Um, this is a completely unique game, a game the likes of which I've never experienced in my life before. And to be completely honest, I probably never will. Um, because it's such a unique premise, it's such a unique idea, and it's one of the most addicting games I think I've played in quite a long time. Um, this game was released as a full retail release for the PlayStation 3 in Japan, and actually did pretty well, but I think they were kind of worried that it wouldn't do as well in the United States, simply because probably the game is based off of a, a, a city in Japan. Um, and therefore, what they decided to do was to release it on the PlayStation Network as a downloadable title at a heavily discounted rate. In fact, I'm struggling to remember if the game was $20 or $30. I think it was $30, but I'm not 100% on that, so don't quote me on that. But, uh, you know, basically releasing a game that has enough content to be considered a full retail game at a discounted price. So right off the bat, you're getting some pretty neat value out of the game and just... A crazy unique game. The game that I'm talking about, before I digress too much, is Tokyo Jungle, okay? This was a game that originally I hadn't ever planned on trying. I didn't even know about it until some fans had actually posted up on my website about it. And I, I looked into it, I was like, this sounds like an interesting premise, but I don't know when I'm going to have time to really play it because it's not a major release. And then actually with, with uh, Panda Lee, who, who visits me once a month, uh, she, for her coming to visit, I figured this would be a great game for us to try out for co-op. And incidentally, it ended up being an excellent game for co-op. So let's talk about it. Let's say, let's say what the heck is, is Tokyo Jungle about if you haven't seen any of our gameplay. Tokyo Jungle is a game with a premise. The premise is, it is maybe, I don't know, 20 years in the future. I forget exactly how many years. It's supposed to be like maybe 100 years. And all the people have vanished from Tokyo. Now, it's not clear if all the people have vanished from the planet Earth, or if it's just Tokyo, but the game takes place in Tokyo, Japan. And so basically, the animals who are left behind have now escaped from their cages, escaped from their, their you know, there's no owners to, to train or pets or anything like that. They're running free. They're running rampant. And so what their game is really about is how different animals, from as small as a chick to as large as an elephant, basically have gone throughout Tokyo, repopulated the area, taken territories and kind of dominated certain areas of the city. It's about the power struggles between these animals trying to control the city. It's about the struggle to survive uh, in a world where maybe the predators now are the big bad top of the food chain and you're maybe just a little herbivore. Um, but you can also have the ability to play as those predators. So it's a very unique premise. Um, the gameplay of Tokyo Jungle. Well, there's two basic game modes to Tokyo Jungle. There's Story Mode, which is a predetermined set of 14 missions that lets you play as a wide variety of animals in Tokyo. Uh, and the, it really, during the story, fleshes out what has been going on. It explains what happened to the people. Uh, you know, where did they go? What was happening? Um, and by the end of the story, you're like, wow, I didn't expect that there was going to be, you know, a story like this. In fact, the story itself, if I remember correctly, ended up being some almost 40 parts, which means, you know, the story was over five hours long. I think it was actually six to seven hour long story mode. Now, that's not the only portion of the game. There's also survival mode. And survival mode is where you're going to spend the meat of the game uh, playing because, uh, excuse me, this is the portion of the game that, number one, you can play co-op. It's not just solo. You can actually play the survival mode co-op. Number two, you get to select what animal you would like to play as in the survival mode. So you can pick an herbivore where basically your goal during the game is going to be to not only to repopulate so that you have, you know, uh, siblings and stuff, but also to dominate certain areas of the map and to complete certain objectives. For the herbivores, the objectives are really more geared towards survival eat a certain number of plants or intake a certain number of calories, um, reproduce a certain number of times. And yeah, I know I'm saying reproduce, like, what? Yeah, you actually fuck in this game. The animals fuck in this game. And I'm not kidding. It doesn't show full graphic stuff, 
But there's points where animals walk up and go, oh, and plant it, and then the, the screen fades to black. So, for herbivores, it's more about eating, it's more about surviving and running away from enemies, and getting from point A to point B, and completing certain objectives. With carnivores, it's going to be more combat-based gameplay. So for carnivores, it might be like, okay, you still need to eat a certain amount of animals. You have to actually fight and kill certain amounts of animals. But it might be, uncover a certain number of objectives. So maybe reproduce once and eat a certain number of animals, and once you've done that, now the boss, a boss character appears. So there might be a really tough dog or a really tough hyena or something that you have to kill. And once you kill them successfully, you actually unlock that animal as a playable animal for another survival mode run later in the game. <clears throat> so here's the basic premise. The, the, you're in Tokyo, and Tokyo is, is, if I believe correctly, there's one, two, three, four, five, like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's maybe 12 different maps that you can roam, and it is a free roaming game. You can roam throughout these four, 12 maps however you want, uh, you know, throughout, throughout the course of the game. And during each segment of the map, because like I said there's 12 of them, there's going to be four, <clears throat> I forget exactly what they're called, there's four points on the map that you need to mark, which basically means you piss or shit on them, that's what it means, but they don't show you pissing or shitting. Once you mark those four points on a map, you now have the ability to find a mate, and what happens is, is the, there are certain kinds of mates that like you no matter what, they're like desperate, they call, actually call them desperate females, they'll fuck you no matter what, they're sluts. I know this is so silly because I'm talking about animals, but uh, there are other females that are more selective, and you're going to probably want to get those, those better females because the better female that you reproduce with, you get better attributes to your offspring. So you might want to take the time to try to get the better female. Now, how do you get the better female? Well, it's all based upon eating. That's right. It's about gluttony. So if you eat enough, whether through killing animals as a carnivore and eating them or actually eating uh, plants as an herbivore, then you can get the better females. Once you get the better female, you reproduce at a nest, which is a certain portion uh, in each 12 maps. Um, and then once you reproduce, you become your, sib or your offspring. And what happens is you're like a litter or a pack or whatever it is, depending on the animal. And let's say you had four kids. Well, now you play as one kid, but you have three others that are basically your extra lives. Okay, so if one guy dies, the next one replaces it, it takes its place. Now, there's some unique elements, there's a lot of timing to the game, because as you get older in the game, as time progresses, you get older, and once you get to about 15 years old, which is roughly, I don't know, I think it's about maybe 15 to 20 minutes of gameplay, um, then you actually start to die, because you're so old, you know, you're, you're going to die, so you're weaker, you're slower, uh, you're not as powerful with combat, uh, and you actually very slowly start to, to starve to death and then just die. So you actually have a certain amount of time, I think it's like 15 to 20 years, where you need to reproduce or else the game will end. Um, in addition, there's all kinds of things you have to take into account. So for example, you may be walking through a territory that unfortunately is dominated by a pack of lions and you need to escape from them. Um, you may be in an area with very low visibility, so you can't really see a lot around you, and then all of a sudden you stumble upon predators that are going to try to kill you, and you're like, oh shit. Um, you may come into an area that unfortunately is polluted, and therefore you're actually getting poisoned, and you may be finding certain items in the game that allow you to cure this poison, or the poison might slowly start to kill you. Uh, the real immediate thing that happens to you more often than not is you're going to be hungry, meaning you're an animal, you're a wild animal, you need to eat. So if you're a carnivore, you need to kill animals, and eat their carcasses. If you're an herbivore, you need to be eating the plants. The problem is certain areas in Tokyo are constantly shifting. So you might have been in this area that had a lot of plants. You went to another one to do something, and when you came back, uh-oh, now there's no plants, or uh-oh, maybe everything there is, is polluted, and if you eat it, you get poisoned, and you start to die. So there really is this gameplay where you need to be constantly moving through the 12 different maps of the game, constantly reproducing, constantly eating. You're always doing something. You're never really just like standing around doing nothing. Now I did mention that there are certain goals for you to perform. Depending on if you're a carnivore or herbivore, it might be kill a certain number of animals, it might be uh, intake a certain number of calories, it might be reproduce a certain number of times, or just in particular going to a certain area of the map. And once you complete these objectives, you get 
point bonuses. And the real goal of survival mode is not only to unlock new animals like I've spoken about, but also to amass as many points as possible during your gameplay. And the reason you want to do that is because even though you've unlocked animals, unfortunately you also have to spend points to play as them. So you may have killed the hyena boss and he's a selectable character, but you also need to spend 50,000 points to unlock him and actually play as him in survival mode. Um, the only other real thing that you'll do in survival mode is there are logs that are hidden throughout the map, although they're not really hidden, they're actually on your mini-map, so you know where they are at all times. And simply what you're going to do is run up to these logs and collect them. And then once you're done with survival mode, during, you know, once you die and you're, you're done with that session, these logs become unlockable parts of the story that you're going to want to read because they're extremely supplemental and they actually flesh out the mystery and the story of what happened to the people in Tokyo and where are they, why are all the animals free and dominant in this, this, this part of the world. So, it's worth it because as you unlock those audio logs, not only are you unlocking these optional text files that give you part of the story, they also unlock the 14 story missions that I had previously mentioned, okay? So, you have incentive to play survival mode because number one, you're going to get to play as new animals and you feel new attributes and stuff. Some animals are faster, some animals are slower, some have better attacks, some have worse, some are herbivores, so it's more about running away. It's cool to go back and play as newer animals. It's a lot of fun. You're going to be unlocking new audio logs so that you can unlock not, not only, not audio logs, but just text logs, so you can read new parts of the story and unlock parts of the story mode. And you're also unlocking new animals to play as. So it's extremely addictive. Even though the gameplay can be repetitive at times, it's very, very addictive. And both Pandali and myself found ourselves getting sucked back into this game time and time again to the point where our survival mode playthrough, if I remember correctly, is something like 80-something parts, which is a ridiculously long amount of time that we were in survival mode until we were able to uncover all of the logs and finally complete the story. So just think about this. A five to maybe eight hour story mode, more than eight hours of content just in survival mode, and then you can keep going. If you're addicted, which, which we were, we, we want to unlock more animals. We want to keep going. And the other cool thing about this game is right now, in the United States, and I don't know internationally how they released this game, but in the United States, there's a lot of freebies on the PlayStation Store for this game. There's a lot of downloadable accessories and things for your animals that give them better attributes, and they're completely for free. There's even a couple downloadable characters, like there's a panda, crocodile, giraffe, and kangaroo pack that's like $2. So wouldn't you spend an extra $2 to get four really cool characters? Yeah, and we did, and we played as the crocodile and the panda, and we really enjoyed it. So the game has excellent value for the dollar and excellent replay value. The couple negatives that I would say about the game are that some of the missions in story mode are very unscaled, meaning you might you might blow through several story missions and all of a sudden there's one mission that's really fucking hard and the checkpoints aren't great. So sometimes you may have to replay a couple minutes of gameplay if you fail at something. And sometimes it's just as simple as in the story mode it's like Metal Gear where you have to sneak through stuff without being detected. If you get detected you instantly fail. Now you have to go back and replay three minutes of gameplay and that could be pretty frustrating. Uh, the other thing that's really frustrating, well not really frustrating, but I could definitely see some people saying is the gameplay could be seen as repetitive and boring to some people. If you're playing survival mode and you're not really getting into it and you're not really enjoying what you're doing, then you're probably not going to like this game overall because that's going to be the majority of what you're doing. I could, I could definitely see this game being a dividing game. Some people are going to say, wow, what a quirky game. It's brutal because you're killing things and you're eating them and you're fucking animals right in the butt and you're doing all this crazy stuff and that's really interesting and the story is really good. But then I can see other people saying, you're just running around killing stuff and eating food, you know. What's that about? That's not fun. So I think it's really going to be a, a dividing... Uh, a, a dividing game where some people are going to say, wow, the game's really good, and some people will say, eh, it's not my cup of tea, I'm going to skip it. Um, if you're the kind of person that really values your dollar, this game is an exceptional amount of value, and I definitely think, especially because it's a downloadable title, it's a no-brainer. This is a game you should check out. I'm kind of, 
I don't know if I should say surprise, but I, I would hope that because I played this game, that this game got more exposure and more people experienced it. Because this is the kind of game that slips under the radar, especially because it was a full retail release in Japan, but they decided not to do that in the U.S. because it was about Tokyo, and they probably didn't think it would sell. Um, but I really think it's one of the most unique games I've played. In my opinion, it's one of my favorite games of the year, simply because it's so unique and fun and quirky and has so much value and a fun, interesting story as well. They didn't even have to put a story mode in the game. It could have just been survival, and I think people would have been hooked on it. The story is just like a crazy, awesome bonus icing on the cake, which I really enjoy. So, Tokyo Jungle, a game that's definitely going to be a game that divides people. You'll have polar opposites, people who love it and people who hate it. For me, for the fact that the amount of content in the game, the originality of the game, the fun story mode, I'm going to give Tokyo Jungle an 8 out of 10. It doesn't necessarily scream amazing greatness, wow, you must buy it now, but if you're looking for a game to kill time, if you're looking for a game that's going to have great value, that has a quirkiness factor, and especially a game for co-op, because the game is a lot of fun in co-op, and actually, in my opinion, makes it a lot easier, Tokyo Jungle is a pretty good game. You shouldn't pass it up. You should definitely check it out on PlayStation Network today. Okay? All right, so that's it for the Hateful Truth video game review series this time around. I hope that you enjoyed the episode, and now you have a lot better picture of what to expect with Tokyo Jungle. And uh, thanks a lot for tuning in, and I will see you next time on the Hateful Truth. Peace.